Here's the deal. We have focused on gifts and healing evangelism and healing. I'm not a healing evangelist and I'm not a healing minister. I'm a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. So what we repented for is some of the misrepresentation of the kingdom in the body of Christ. God never wanted to exalt gifts, so we draw to them as our answer. Jesus is our answer. Let's make it plain. We're the body of Christ. These signs follow those that... So every one of us is equipped and qualified and commissioned by God to release faith in the power of God and the spirit of God into mankind, period. You get it? So for years, for years, I understood healing. I understood a gift on my life. I understood the healing anointing of God and how it flowed. And I would preach. I did healing services the way I met Todd. He came into my office and and, and things and, and he was he was hurting and lost and suicidal, actually, and and on drugs and God set him free and changed his life and 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 he came to some healing services that I had open to the public. Now I would preach the gospel and at that time I was praying for everybody. So he's watching people get healed. I mean we could run a pretty cool highlight clip. Things recreated, restored, healed, beautiful, powerful things. Uh actually uh I said to God a long time ago because of the questions, the whole falling down. Who knows if God wants to blast somebody, go ahead and blast him. God, you're God. I don't need that to happen. I don't need I want the cancer to go. You can lay on the floor all you want and shake. But when you get up, I want to know is the cancer gone. You see what I'm saying? I'm not bothered by people falling, manifesting. You manifest all you want. I want the finished work of the cross manifested. I want the work of Jesus manifested. OK, that's the big deal to me. So I started praying for people and I, and I wasn't even thinking the fall down stuff, the shaking, the manifestation. I'm not against it. I feel God all the time. OK, I get alone in the bedroom and manifest sometimes. <laughs> just, it's just yay. Uh Oh, I got to hold together here. See, because if you're beside yourself, it's for God. If you're sound mind, it's for you. I got to stay sound here. So uh, but I'd pray for people and I've watched cancers disappear and didn't feel a thing. We've had tumors just evaporate, just go away, never felt a thing. Why? Because Jesus is Lord. They submit to the blood of Jesus. Sickness submits to the power of God. So whatever we've done and whatever questions we have, sir, we just got to push them all aside, get back to the gospel like we prayed, and let's go forward with what we know in the word of God. Okay? So here's the deal. You all have. Let's go to uh, Matthew 10 quick. You all have the commissioning. From God, we're the body of Christ. We're believers. So here's what happened. Uh, two years ago, the Lord commissioned me to do what I'm doing now. I do four meetings a week at home that are teaching, training, equipping, and imparting. And plus I travel. In the last two years, I've done no less than 22 of those settings a month. 22. So this is what God's doing and saying. So that's a lot of services a month. They're not church services. They're healing school slash service, impartation, teaching, training settings to equip the body of Christ and release them. Where in a lot of those settings, I don't rarely even pray for people. I preach the clearest gospel I understand and I release the people to pray. And it's cool stuff. We would, these precious girls over here from Wheeling, we've been down there a couple of times, going there in a couple of weeks, but just keep the edge sharp, just going. But the last time I was there, it was sweet. Because we were in the back and there was a lady that didn't have the use of her hand. Remember the lady with the thing? And it was three visitors in the middle. And I had everybody praying for everybody. In fact, the one lady came up and she was riddled with pain. And I had preached the gospel. Do you remember this? She was up front and I was using, I wanted to give them a crash course on praying for the sick. And I forbid them to counsel. We're so caught up in counsel. Man, it's just, they don't need your counsel. They need Jesus. They need the power of God. They need you to just say, be healed in Jesus' name. They don't need a three-mile prayer. Be healed. Man, that's good. Be healed in Jesus' name. Pain you leave. Affliction go in the authority of the name of Jesus. Be whole. Okay, and we'll talk in detail about some of this right before I wrap up. But because we're going to be, I'll be fresh right at the end, right before we leave. Uh but this lady's up there and all these people are up there that are sick. And I told them I'm not praying for all these people. I'm not lining them up and praying for them. I did it for years. Saw a whole lot of healing. But you know what people were doing? Wow, he's anointed. Wow, he's gifted. Wow, he knows God. Wow, he carries the healing mantle and all this stuff. Then everybody's called my house. They want me to go to pray for all their loved ones. And they think I'm their answer. And I realized, wait a minute, I'm doing injustice to the body of Christ. I'm walking in my 
understanding, revelation, gifting, anointing to a degree. Got a long ways to go. I'm growing like we're all growing, okay? I'm not seeing near what I need to see. I'm seeing cool stuff, but I ain't even close. It's just a, what'd you call it? What'd your dad say? It was just a token of what God wants to do. Because I'm not seeing everybody I touch just go bang, right? I'm seeing some cool stuff, but I'm, I'm motivated. I'm encouraged. So what I did two years ago, I started equipping and training and getting everybody else involved. So in Wheeling, I, I said, now listen, I want to give you a crash course. I said, I don't want counsel. And I don't want long prayers. I said, it's simple. We're in the name of Jesus praying, be healed, be made whole, back be healed, pain leave, knee be restored. Simple commands, direct to the point, and then ask them immediately to check their body. That's how simple we kept it. So, so when, I, when I was going to give that instruction this time, I had all these people on it, but I said, like you, ma'am, I said, what's going on with you? And she started to cry. Who knows when people are hurting and you talk about their infirmity and their suffering, they cry quick. She just started to cry and said she got weepy and said she had pain all over. And she didn't cry hard. She just wept. Her eyes filled up. So you knew it was real. She was hurting. And she said, I got pain all through my joints, all through my body, and they can't diagnose this. Nobody knows what it is. I said, honey, it's irrelevant. Just, it's just, just stop. It's okay. I said, it's infirmity. It's got to go. But I said, okay, people, here's the deal. When you pray for a person in a situation, like now, mind you, this is how aggressive God is and how much he wants to move. Do you know, it's like self-consciousness and we, we, we take way too much to heart. We're like way too involved. Can I be? I'm simple, OK? I'm real simple. I'm not like some deep, heavy guy. Watch. It's real simple. You're God's choice. You're God's will. You're the yes of God. And he put his spirit in you to do the work. All you need to do is release your faith and say, be healed and step out and represent love. That's that's simple. God heals. You don't. God does. OK. These people were praying for out in public. Sometimes they're cursing. Sometimes there was a lady just smoking. She smoked a cigarette and a half while we were praying. But she had enough reverence that when we prayed, she'd lay it down. As soon as we'd stop, she'd pick it right back up. And she lit the second one off the half of the other one and kept going. Her leg was straight and bound for 32 years. It had never moved at all. It was frozen. And Todd and I were praying for her. And he's like a bulldog. He wouldn't back off. He's just hitting that leg and hitting that leg. He prayed eight, ten times for that leg. Why? Because he's not asking God to heal. He's commanding that leg to loose. He's com it's like hitting a hard stone with a hammer. We've been taught you pray more than once you don't believe or something in the body. Yeah, that's because we're praying to God to heal. No, we're praying authority and command and firmity. Go. I said go. You have no right to stay. You come out now in Jesus name. And sometimes it'll seem like it's just sitting there going. And you just hit it and you don't back off. And you cross a line. I can't explain it, but it's something spiritual about it. What you're saying is, I'm serious. I'm not a pushover. I believe the word of God. And you're coming out. Now you go. And you get aggressive. And you can feel that rise up in you. So we're hitting this leg and praying and praying. And all of a sudden, she goes, oh. And we're like, oh, what? She's, oh. <laughs> it's just funny. Because cause I know how Christians think. They think, God, if she just put out that cigarette, maybe God could move. And we bind God and limit God to a lit cigarette. Ah, come on. <laughs> we got to stop that. That's like self-righteous, twisted deception. He came to seek and save that which is lost. She's not condemned and judged because of that. That's all she knows. Give her Jesus so she knows something more. Right? Come on. That's true. It's time to love people. So, so we're praying and she says, oh, and we're like, oh, what? And she said, all the pain that was there just left. And you should see Todd, his eyes. He's that's like throwing a dog a bone. He's like, oh, he looked at me. He's like, progress. We're on this thing. And he's just commanding this knee. And I mean, he's on it. And uh, and I'm standing there praying. And and then she says, oh, my gosh, I can just I can't explain it. I feel something happening. So she starts moving it a little. Her friends there knows her. It's a neighbor knows her for years, has never seen her move her leg. You know what I mean by a straight leg? No mobility whatsoever. She goes, how did she do it? Oh, she said, it feels like it wants to bend. That's what she said. She took this foot like this, lays down her cigarette, balances herself and pushes. And she's going and her friends freaking out. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I've never seen you bend your leg. And Todd and I are looking at each other going. You know, we're like, yeah, you know, watch what she ended up doing. 
She said, this is amazing. Then he's preaching Jesus and the gospel to her. Do you see that where she was at in her soul, in her spirit, in her life is irrelevant. She needs the touch of God. She needs the love of God. Please, when you go out in your life, get your eyes off of people. And keep your eyes on him so you see them through him. He loves that person you're looking at. He created them like he created you. You get it? So she got down. Tell him about the one with the stiff leg that was smoking. And, and I was just talking about persistence. So, and that's a grace thing, people. A lot of stuff you can't put in a textbook. Like uh, we're, we're reaching out to the public. It's not a one, two, three. Everybody's different. You're all different. Do you know you're all different? Do you know you're called to just be who you are in Christ? You're not going to, don't try to be like him. Don't try to be like me. Be who you are in Christ Jesus. Is that a fair word? Do you just be you in the Christ? You're not trying to be anybody else. You're being who you are in Jesus, right? But this lady goes, I got to try this. She goes, she's the perfect position. <laughs> like you, you utilize that position now, young lady, and preach the kingdom to her. Isn't that cool? You say, well, did she get born again? You don't always pray that with everybody. You touch them and you love them and you give them Jesus. Some people ask to get born again. Sometimes you perceive it's time to ask them that. But let me get something real straight here, because I know a lot of the church, when you teach this stuff, is, is they, they, they got themselves in a rut of trying to find what's wrong with what's right. Well, yeah, but are they even getting saved? I mean, all these people are getting healed. Are they getting saved? And, and all of a sudden, you're, you're finding a negative in a good thing. And there is no negative. It's ludicrous. Because you sow, you water, God causes the increase. You're sowing the most vital seed of the touch of God in their life they've ever had. You're showing them firsthand the reality of God. And if they break and get born again, Great. But it, watch this. Watch this. Who heals, us or God? So if God was, had any negatives about this whole process, would her leg be bending? He must be okay with it. Come on! <laughs> See, this thing is an enemy if it's not renewed. If this thing isn't in the simplicity of the gospel, I'm telling you, it's an enemy. Because I know how people think. And they come to you and they say, yeah, but, well, yeah. And they're searching for what's wrong with what's right. Who knows it's right to go and heal the sick. And then tell them the kingdom's here. Can you make them get born again? So if we pull off getting them to pray a prayer, have we really done a great thing? It's all about their heart before God and God moving in their heart. You've just played an important part in the process. And you've sown into the ground of their life for a harvest. You get it? Keep it that simple and you can't go wrong. You can't fail.